Hello everyone. Thank you for watching this short visual that goes along with the firing process section of my website. This particular video concerns itself with Anagama wood firing and I'll jump in here when I feel the need for a narrative. Here you will see an example of tumble stacking in the kiln of Kristen Muller. Kristen has very artfully placed the work on top of each other, on its side, in front of another piece of work to create special effects when the river of fire and ash flow through the kiln. The fire will leave its unique mark on each piece and the ash will settle on the pots, melting at high temperatures, creating beautiful color and texture. In the interior of the firebox, you will see several tea bowls placed on their sides. The side of the tea bowls, which are closer to the shelf, will receive less fire and ash effects and the top more. That will create a beautiful varied effect. Notice that underneath each tea bowl is wadding or fire clay, which protects the work from the shelf or in the case of tumble stacking, allows the work to separate. This wadding leaves a mark, which is very highly prized and shows that the work has been wood fired. Some of these kilns are very, very large and can take weeks to fire. Here you'll see examples of the stoke holes open as you see the sunlight pouring through the kiln. I had the privilege of helping to fire this small dragon kiln in Chiang Rai, Thailand. Its fuel is bamboo. This particular kiln is a low fire kiln. It is firing flower pots for export. Not all Jagama kilns are low fire kilns. Many of them are high fire kilns. In order to save fuel, the kilns in this part of Thailand often fire the work green in their high fire kilns using ash glaze as a decorative element. Looking inside the stoke hole, you can see that the pots are fired rim to rim. The kiln does not get hot enough to melt the ash, and the ash is simply brushed off when the pots are removed. In the next image, you will see a kiln from Ghana, West Africa, that I also had the privilege of firing. This kiln is fired with wood, and the same thing happens. The pots are not affected by the ash. The kiln does not get hot enough. My concern in this video is with the high fire process, such as this climbing kiln in China, where the ash melts on the work and profoundly affects its appearance and aesthetic. Next, you will see a short excerpt of the firing process of the kiln of Kristen Muller. Kristen, my teacher, mentor, and dear friend, has an Anagama style two chamber kiln in the United States, which technically would make it a Namoragama or multi chambered kiln. I'm here today. It's a beautiful day in November. He's at day two and a half right now. And this is the parameter of the kiln. And so we're at 1291, which is a good temperature. It's a very large structure, as you can see. Right now she's outside the kiln. We've gone through quartz, but she's still not wanting to build too much ash because the kiln's quite full and the <coughs> work is sitting right up to the edge on the side shelves and if you build too much ash too quickly and the work gets covered in ash at just about this temperature it will stay looking like that the ash actually protects it. I'm gonna throw a few stokes on the fire and then I'll walk around it
some of the wood that's stacked so beautifully this year. It's very cleaned up here this year. It looks beautiful. So much work. Separation between the two kilns. And this is new. She talked about stoking back here in the front of the door. These are the stoke holes in the back of the door. You can see some of the pulleys that hold the doors. It's quite a big operation. Chimney back here. Can you even see some steam coming out of the mouse holes down in the back? There's a lot of moisture in here. Here's some more wood. A lot of wood here. Looks like they redid this and somebody left their mark. These are the stuck holes in the side on both sides. And I better get back to work. I'm gonna just This is Karen Kapinski and she's sugar rocky stoking the door. All right, we'll look at the coal bed ready. No. That's, low. That's low. That is low. That's even lower than. right now in this kiln and holding. Here to roar at the fire it catches instantly. Cool. Pretty sloppy stoking for me. I want to get it closed. Close it most of the way. Let a little oxygen come through. And that's it. And there you have it. Thank you. This wood fire kiln belongs to Allison Palmer of the United States. It reaches its desired temperature between cone 10 and 11 in approximately 30 hours. Here you see the firebox, which is on the side of the kiln. The wood is stoked here until the kiln reaches bisque temperature. At that time, this area is bricked up and side stoking commences. After side stoking the kiln, the kiln crew watches the chimney. The black smoke means that the, that the kiln is in deduction. When the smoke clears and the fire holes on the top of the kiln recede, it is time for another stoke. This pattern is repeated until the kiln reaches its desired temperature. The kiln is then held or soaked for approximately one hour and the firing is complete. If you'd like to learn more about the firing processes of Kristen Muller or Allison Palmer and see their work, you can contact them through the links section of my website. Thanks for watching.